Oh, hi. It's Dr. Richard McLean and Crystal the Husky. I'm making an S100 um, um, request um, with the NDIS. My NDIS number is 4309-38559. Um, I've changed my number, I don't want to put that out. But this is um, a um, request for a review of a decision. Um, the NDIS, yeah, I'll just say my statement in a sec. Here we go. On the 7th of the 1st, 2024, I sent an urgent public letter to CEO of the uh, NDIS CEO, Rebecca Falkingham. She has not only ignored me, she's pointedly neglected me and gone out of her way to avoid me. And in addition to that, she's um, made some executive decisions, which has um, extinguished my plan and I'm at risk of harmlessness. Um, the, the, that letter is at the following link and the decision I'm asking her to review is to simply accept the mail and act on the suggestions and then I'll be out of the financial ship and um, I won't even need the NDIS. So here's the link. There was a decision at the NDIS to um, gaslight, neglect, delibidize my message um, to, the, to Rebecca Faulkner and who is the CEO of the NDIS. I don't do these websites for fun. A lot of effort was put into it um, and a lot of it calls out um, systemic um, corruption. And um, um, it's my moral obligation as a person who respects democracy and humanity to call out that corruption. Um, Rebecca Falkingham, by refusing to um, acknowledge the mail I sent to her, is um, being corrupt. And I called up to complain and they said they would put in a complaint. It's just more delay, deny, defer methodology and that elicits my financial ruin and my continued persecution, financial persecution, my family violence, coercive financial control from Stephen Isonides and the risk, immediate risk to my health, wealth and safety and life such as the um, Federal Court of Australia acknowledged in the redacted, uh, rejected PID to me, which inadvertently said there was an imminent threat to my health, wealth, safety and welfare. And the NDIS are complicit in witnessing me become homeless. They are an agency who don't care for me. I'm treated differently and they wish me harm. So that's an S100 and um, these are the issues that I pointed out on the website. <laughs> On the 6th of the 1st, I wrote a letter, a public letter, that's in the public domain on that website, to Rebecca Falkingham, the CEO of the NDIS. I, I started the letter, I approached this communication with a spirit of forgiveness for those who failed to act ethically or within their remit. remit. Um, that doesn't hold anymore. Um, it's awful what they're doing to me. And the subject is an urgent appeal for redress and accountability. I, I I issued the family violence um, by Steve Isonides that's emboldened by government corruption and the delibidization of my life. I said, your responsibilities under the NDIS Code of Conduct and the UN Charter of um, Person with Disabilities that Australia has ratified in 2008 and signature to is the following things. I need a home. This isn't sustainable, the one I've got now, for my dog and I. That's absolutely an obligation of the Australian democracy for a person with a disability and it hasn't been upheld. I want Rebecca Falkingham to acknowledge, under her watch, you witnessed me living on the streets and you're doing so again. Um, Carol, the coordinator, has been recorded um, 
acknowledging that that funding was um, in addition to my plan and not um, inclusive of it. So, and there's another issue. I shouldn't have to accept less than I deserve and less than I deserve doesn't exist. Anyway, um, I asked her to acknowledge um, the NDIS funding was in addition to my original funding, which is not going to be needed in a minute when I tell you this. Um, acknowledge ADHD diagnosis and provide treatment or solicit treatment. It's not okay that um, I don't have my medicine for ADHD. Um, if I had cancer and was refused chemotherapy, it'd be outrage. But just because my illness is invisible doesn't negate, neg negate that um, that can be um, um, just an optional for me. So I've asked her, acknowledge my former spouse, Steve Weissnides and I, and negotiate settlement. Um, it's not okay that um, the NDIS, as well as the police, the government, and AFCA and Australian Human Rights Commission, all those people, do not acknowledge what Steve's already um, um, admitted to in that we're together for five years. There is there is a law, uh, family relationships law, and it's obligated under a legal framework that we separate financially. I'm not going to need the NDIS as soon as um, that's acknowledged. Um, now, I've asked her to acknowledge my human rights abuses and her obligations to me. She has to acknowledge my documented human rights abuses by an NDIS worker who was trained by the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commission. And um, she is a CEO of the National Disability Insurance Scheme is aware and receives reports that the person with a disability is experiencing human rights abuses. They have obligations and responsibilities to address it. And here are some of the key things I'll just summarize. They must report and document. They must investigate. They must intervene and prevent further harm. Hard when she's the one dictating the harm. They must follow NDIS policies and procedures. They must collaborate with authorities. They must provide advocacy and support, and they must review and continually improve the system. That process is not negotiable to not oblige to me. It's just not. And that's part of um, this S100 official complaint that needs to be acknowledged. Also, work cover. Um, the NDIS needs to acknowledge the letter from Professor Bridget Hamilton to my workplace minister, Danny Pearson, and acknowledge that not one but two work cover cases have never been paid. There's provisions to apply where the employer does not meet liabilities. If the employer of the worker neglects, refuses, or is unable to pay the compensation in discharge of the employer's liability under Section 72.1 within 21 days of receiving the claim for payment of compensation, the liability becomes a liability of the authority. That's the law. The NDIS and Rebecca Falkingham need to address the workplace minister, Danny Pearson, and force him to settle my not one but two work cover insurances imminently. Um, work cover is considered a mainstream service, and this has got to be done anyway before a SEALS application is funded. Um, so there's another one. You have to acknowledge, um, as the CEO of the NDIS, Rebecca Falkingham, and the, the government have failed me regarding the Convention on the Rights of Disabled People under the UN Charter, under these articles. And I've provided the evidence. Article 12, equal recognition before the law. Article 13, access to justice. Article 15, freedom from torture or cruel, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment. Article 16, freedom from exploitation, violence and abuse. Article 17, protecting the integrity of the person. Article 22, respect for privacy. Article 25, health and Article 27, uh, 28, adequate standard of living and social protection. And the last thing I've asked her for is, I want an AVO against Stefan Isonides, who's threatened to kill me and my dog, and he's a sociopathic narcissist who's convinced the whole of the world, the government, the police, the hospital system, the NDIS, to not acknowledge what is a fact, and the government has a preferred reality in which that relationships never acknowledged. And it is a fact. It is not sustainable or permissible anymore for the NDIS, the police, or anyone to um, create an alternate reality that is not consistent with actual reality. So that is my S100. Um, 
Um, so the decision um, they have made is that um, there's a few. Um, they've delegitimized and refused to um, reject that email. They cannot anymore. I do not think their decision is right and I've asked for review. Um, I'm directly affected by the decision and I have authority to ask for a review and it's requested within three months of the decision. I have the email that I sent off as evidence and I called up and I recorded um, the um, complaint and they said they put in complaint. Um, so I'm just filling out the form and I'm just gonna pop this um, YouTube video in there and it's gonna have to be acknowledged um, in a very short time period. A failure to do so will just describe another way that the government and the systemic and politicized system is delaying, denying, deferring my justice, keeping me in poverty and enlarging the space in which I may commit suicide. I'm not suicidal, but that is the in intention. And I've already proven that I will do that from the exact abuse that's happening now because I died three years ago. And there's another cover up even about the brain injury that I have now. So that's my S100, get to work, thanks. Yeah, so my public interest disclosure was rejected from the NDIS and um, I sent an urgent email to csn.escalations at ndis.gov.au on um, 3rd of May 2023. Gee, that's a long time to be abused, isn't it? Dear NDIS, under legislation, a PID has 14 days before it's responded to. I sent my PID over a week ago, nearly two weeks, and not even received an acknowledgement back. I wish to say that I am requesting whistleblower protections via the PID Act. The Federal Circuit Court of Australia, in their rejected PID, has inadvertently stated that a perversion of the course of justice is happening, that maladministration has occurred, that corrupt conduct of public officials has occurred, and that this unreasonably creates a risk to my welfare and safety. And I said to the NDIS, in addition, I would like to say, I need and demand and am obligated by the country protection from, per from per prosecutions of fraud um, that I defrauded the NDIS because it was the only way I could get money to survive. And the money was meant for me anyway. Additionally, I need protections because in my desperation, um, I published an encounter with a sexual encounter with Tony Riddle, an NDIS official who was doing work for the NDIS. Additionally, I'm whistleblowing because a person employed by the NDIS saw my emails and contacted me personally. He then came over to my house, seduced me, had sex with me, fucked me, and then revealed that he knew of my whistleblowing emails to the NDIS. And I guess you could say I've been fucked by the NDIS, but I'm gonna fuck you back. Um, I wish to say that I've been psychometrically profiled by the government as a targeted individual. And this has meant that I cannot get a lawyer, nor be a whistleblower, nor go to the police, which puts me in a vulnerable position. In fact, the police and Werribee Mercy Hospital have covered up my attempted suicide attempt in January 21 um, and then covered it up with impunity and on another incarceration which lasted for three months as a political prisoner allowed my landlord to go to my home in Footscray under the watchful eye of the hospital that I was in and the Footscray police and destroy everything I own. Lastly, my former partner Steve Stefan Stefan Isonides is orchestrating this from behind the scenes. He was a former ASIO agent and he owes me a fair, equal, legal settlement under relationship laws in Australia. And um, that's imminent right now. I received a message on Grindr that because of my whistleblowing, he was found to have embezzled over a million dollars and had to pay it. Um, that's for his corrupt finances. And apparently how he um, invested a million dollars from the sale of a house in a um, offshore tax haven that was bought with the proceeds of drugs. And um, he had to pay a million dollars 
And so instead of accepting responsibility for his own corruption, he now wants to kill me and kill my dog. Yes, Crystal. I said to the NDIS, I've tried getting an AVO, um, but the magistrate won't listen. And I can't go to police who, um, who don't acknowledge the relationship. I am in hiding because of this threat. Um, lastly, the Attorney General, Mark Dreyfus, refuses to acknowledge me, re refuses emails and calls, and will not intervene in my work cover case at the AAT, which was doomed to fail anyway. I wrote to McKeeley Cash in 2022 and predicted it. And under the Attorney General's portfolio, um, it's AFCA, where I've been banned and lost over $2 million, and the Australian Human Rights Commission, which free kicked a million and a half dollar settlement to the opposition TAL and Australian Super. Um, I know the government's behind my destruction and my oppression and my victimisation because I appealed to tell when the Australian Human Rights Commission were out of the way of the settlement and they granted me $50,000. And that proves that um, it was the Australian Human Rights Commission that was the money block. Um, I said to the NDIS, please provide a date by which you will grant me my whistleblower protections and acknowledge my public interest disclosure. Now, it was rejected on account of me not being a public official. This is incorrect. I'm the former spouse of a high-ranking um, government official, um, which makes me eligible to make a PID. I'm also eligible to make a PID because I was a nurse in a public hospital. That makes me a public official. In addition to that, um, I've got a federal court document that's satisfied that I was an employee of the DSS. So that also makes me a public official. Um, and what was the other one? Um, I can't remember the other one. Oh, I've got a, I'm contracted to be employed um, by a government contract to the NDIS. So that also makes me a public official. So the reason why the PID was rejected um, is not sufficient to reject my PID. So this S100 is also requiring the NDIS to review that decision and acknowledge the evidence and provide my whistleblower protection immediately. Um, so I've gone on in this letter, framed by the relevant corruption in the NDIS and the fears for my safety, I need protection from litigation in order to keep me safe from political and financial reprisals. I've sent this letter to my power of attorney, um, who won't be mentioned, um, she's hopeless, um, you need to respond to this letter and my PID in writing 14 days from my initial whistleblowing PID. After all, I'm homeless, under duress, without enough to eat or an internet connection or hot, or hot water. It is not permissible, framed by all that has been said, that I'm not given safety and freedom from reprisal for sticking up for myself and exposing corruption, as was my moral obligation to democracy and humanity. Dr. Rich McLean. And that's my PID. It was rejected by the NDIS and this S100 is demanding that that decision be reviewed and immediately revoked. 